Hello everyone, uh, we are now in the Loire Valley. So I'm Murray from My Private Paris. So we are a small boutique agency specialized in private tours. And now we're doing virtual tours every week. And this week I'm with Flora. So welcome Flora. Thank you. <laughs> so Flora uh, made already a video. You were uh, in the south, in the Dordogne region. Now we are in the Loire. So actually I was born in the Loire. So this is very special for me guys. And uh, you are also kind of specialized of this uh, region or you love this region. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us why? I mean, why do you like it so much? <laughs> it's just, I think it's one of the most beautiful regions in France with all the castles and it's just so beautiful. And the history is amazing. I studied history and uh, kind of specialized in this uh, time in, in period. In this period, okay. Yes. Yeah, it's true the Loire is not very far from Paris. Mm. You can actually do it as a day trip. Exactly. Uh, in like two hours, three hours max, so you can mm. be there. Uh, now we are in Chinon, but we're going to visit two other places in the Loire. So you're going to discover that during this video. If you want to share this video with your friends, please do. You can also help us just talking about this video we're doing every week. And of course, you can tip the guide at the end or in the middle of the video if you like. What can we know about it? So Chinon is a royal fortress. Mm -hmm. uh, the kings of France lived here for a little bit um, at the end of the 1400s. So it's almost the Renaissance, but sort of like the end of the Middle Ages as well, we could say. Okay. Um, this is actually where the, one of the first places because uh, the kings of France lived on the Loire Valley for a while. That's why there's so many castles around here. Okay. And it all started right here. Okay, so you mean this is one of the first castle that settled in the Loire Valley from the kings, right? Exactly. Okay. So most of these castles used to be uh, medieval fortresses. Mm -hmm. uh, we're on the top of a hill here. Uh, yeah, you can feel the wind. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so it used to be a medieval fortress and then um, a, a Renaissance palace. Okay, so what is the difference between the medieval fortress and the renaissance palace can can you tell just by the architecture is it something we can like for example if you don't know at all what is a, a medieval fortress so how do you know this is protection big walls yes obviously <laughs> okay those big towers huh? yes big walls, you can see it's not you don't have a lot of detail is that common in the medieval time exactly because the most important thing is about defense okay. and also the location the fact that we're on top of a hill by the river so you can see really far away if enemies are coming you can see and especially we're talking about the times of the hundred year war against okay. england so the enemy at the time is england right oh yes okay. <laughs> big time um actually at some point the british were here it belonged to them you know it sort of went back and forth um so so yeah the times we really needed defense buildings like uh, like this okay. for sure so this is for defending ourselves against the english right so here you say that it's one of the first castles so who was the king living here okay so he's not officially the king but okay. his dad was the king and he was supposed to be the king of france his name was charles so he was supposed to be charles the seventh mm -hmm. he will become charles the seventh okay um what happens is we're in the middle of the hundred year war we're in the 1400s and the british are actually occupying paris um and and like the half north of france so the heir charles uh has to go down south mm -hmm. this is this area belongs to him and the british are not here so he comes and lives here and he sort of gives up on uh on paris on paris yeah. and ruling and he's just chilling oh. here okay well it's a nice region to just chill oh yeah I understand yeah okay. yeah it's a perfect place for that so <laughs> okay. that's what he does for a long time um and uh someone will come someone very famous mm -hmm. she will come here to this place this is where she will meet him for the very first time and history will change from then on okay so who, who is this person joan of arc oh yeah okay we like her we like her <laughs> and she was here and she did a lot of uh, important things so joan of arc is coming here so is she already dressed like a soldier at the time that she's coming here with her horse and all of that no, no she's just a young girl she's just this young girl she not, was 17 okay. just not a young known. girl 
No, not okay. at all. Okay. And she will come and change the course of things. So we'll talk about her. Okay. But we'll um, just to say that from this time on, even after Charles will become a king and then his son, and for a while, kings will be like, this is a really nice region and we like it more than crowded, dirty Paris. Mm. Uh, so that's why they, they will build so many beautiful castles and live mm. here for a long time. So now we are inside the castle and uh, in the courtyard, right? Mm -hmm. And so just right here we have a building that is half destroyed but we can still see something. So do you know what happened here? Yeah, it's a really important part of the castle um, because this is where Joan of Arc met Charles. Okay. Charles VII who uh, was the king, not really king. Okay. Uh, so what happened? Charles was here being just king of this little land uh, while Paris was occupied by the English etc. And Joan of Arc was uh, just a very young girl, a peasant, coming from the east of France. And uh, apparently she heard voices of saints, of Saint Margaret and Saint Michael, who told her several times, you have to go all the way to Chinon to meet Charles and tell him to move, like to get going okay. and reconquer Paris and the north of France. And be king of France because that's what he's supposed to do. Okay, so she's the voice motivating the king to move and to continue, like, ex not exploring, but conquering, like, different territories in the, or regaining, let's say, territories yes. in France. Okay. Exactly. So okay. she's just this young girl mm -hmm. uh, and she comes all the way from the east of France to here to meet the king. Okay. So imagine when she gets here and she's like, can I talk to the king? People and the king, of course, that he's like, uh, who is this girl? Okay. right <laughs> uh so they say well she has a very important message for the king uh but she wants to test uh her he wants to test her he wants to see if if, if it was really saint michael and saint Mike, margaret that uh talked to her that would mean uh she was sent by god right mm -hmm. and religion was so important of course at the time so he wants to see if he can uh recognize him if she can recognize him mm -hmm. so this happens in the room that used to be right here that's now destroyed okay uh, but so, it was so so should we move here and so you can tell us let's what happened closer. here okay let's do that so so it happened right here mm -hmm. so the king decides to dress up just like one of the people of his court and he puts someone else a random guy uh, on the throne he wants to see if joan is going to recognize him even though he's dressed up uh, so she comes in the room and instead of walking towards the throne, she starts walking and then she actually sees the king and walks towards him. You have to imagine back then there was no way she could know the face of the king, right? I mean, there was no TV or magazines, so uh, that was supposed to be like a miracle. And that helped the king actually listening to her, you know, like okay. she must be sent by God. Otherwise, how could she recognize me? Okay. So that's how it That's starts. That's what happened here. Okay, so right here, where, where we are. So we, we imagine the, the throne being here, for example. Let's say with the chimney. And okay, and so she's walking in and she's not going to the throne and she's just, just going, going to, straight to the king. Straight to the king. Okay. So what she says to the king is three things. We have to go and reconquer Orléans, mm -hmm. uh, Orleans, which is one of the big cities, like the biggest city around here mm -hmm. uh, that was taken by the English. Uh, then we're going to go to Reims, which is the city where king, kings of France were always for centuries uh, sacred mm -hmm. because he wasn't the official king at the moment. So they had to sort of like legitimize him of and course. have God on their yes. side. Yes. And after that, the third point, this, of course, was said to Joan by the voices, mm -hmm. uh, was to reconquer Paris. Uh -huh. So that's what they decide to do. They start by going to Orléans and they do reconquer Orléans. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the king and the others are like, well, she must be right. I mean, this mm -hmm. is working. So that's what they do. And then they go to Reims. Uh, so the king is crowned. And then it's when they go to Paris to try and reconquer Paris that she is arrested. Mm. Uh, she's become someone dangerous because she's the one motivating the king to act and yes, everything. So she's uh, captured by the English and the Bourguignon, which mm -hmm. were you know, there was also a civil war. I mean, that period was really yes. a mess. And she ended pretty bad, right? Joan of yeah. Arc, we all know how she actually died. Uh, probably you know as well. So she was burned, right? She so, was burned, exactly, okay. because of, the, of 
of all of this because she was she became so important. And Charles, by the way, didn't really help. He wasn't mm. that nice of a guy. And I so guess. in France we say Jeanne, so Jeanne d'Arc, and uh, so Joan of Arc and Jeanne d'Arc. And so she's her legend is uh, is very famous, of course, in France. But there is also kind of a debate, right? There is people believing really in uh, in her. I don't know, in a role as a, an almost military role, and other people think that she was just an advisor, right, mm. of the king. So there is kind of a little debate historically, yeah. or not really? Well, not really historically, I okay. would say, yeah. but okay. there is a debate, you're right, because she became such a symbol mm -hmm. of um, nationalism in a way, like a patriot, you mm -hmm. know, like, sort of like, let's fight to, sure. uh, to, to reconquer France. Um, so, you know, many different people used her uh, as a symbol, uh, so that really is sort of a, a big thing. So you have to be really careful about, you know, yeah. what is a legend, what is true. She really did exist. Mm -hmm. What we're talking about, I mean, she was right here. Yeah, where we're standing. that's in incredible. That's incredible. And there is a little sign here telling Jan of Arc was here. Exactly. So yeah, I mean, th this is this, this is, is for sure. Yeah. But then, of course, there were ma many movies made of, about I'm thinking, her. Yeah, I'm thinking and about this one. And you see her fighting. Yes. <laughs> that probably never happened. Okay. You know, so we know the king did gave her an army but that was probably symbolic we know she I was see. very active like we have letters that she sent to like the most important um uh, dukes and counts in france inviting them to the to the coronation of the king like you have to be here this is really important so i mean she was just a young girl she mm. was exceptional she was amazing okay but maybe i mean she wasn't trained. But maybe she wasn't fighting with a sword and all of that she wasn't trained but, as a soldier um but still 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 a great great legend of friends and great person still uh, amazing yeah. woman for okay. sure well thank you thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so there was another famous person that spent some time here in chinon okay not in uh, such a comfortable way as charles okay. uh, someone that was a prisoner here he na his name was jacques de mollet mm -hmm. and he was uh, the grand master of the order of the temple Okay, so maybe you can tell us more about the Templars because I love it's it's like a mysterious secret kind of order, right? Of yeah. knights. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's very strange because they are religious but also soldiers. Mm -hmm. So they were very very powerful. You know, it's like spiritual power, but also like they were knights. So they were supposed to protect the pilgrims, and they you know and they were fighting in the Middle East. Uh, um, so we're talking so, about the Crusades, right? Yeah. That they were going to Jerusalem to protect exactly. the pilgrimage there. Okay. Exactly. But after a while, uh, the Christians um, sort of lost everything over there. And uh, so there was really no point to have the Templars so much anymore. But they had become a very powerful order, again, because they were both um, like an army and sp they had spiritual power. So they and they had tons of money, so they didn't want to just disappear. And the king of France at the time, um, his name was Philip, Philippe le Bel, um, kind of needed money, you know, so, uh, and he wanted them to be gone because they were also um, sort of an army of the Pope and Philip had a lot of problems with the Pope, you know, uh, power fight. Okay, <laughs> yes, okay. So um, at some point, so we're in the 1300s, really the Middle Ages, um, the king, Philip, decides to um, arrest all the Templars the Knight Templars, so the or to sort of dissolve the order. And that happened on a very special day. I mean, I heard that apparently if mm. you're afraid of Friday 13, it's because of what happened with the Templars, right? They were all exactly. arrested on the Friday 13 October, right? Exactly, in 1307. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the first Friday the 13th. So it's like a cursed, cursed date, day, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> there's lots of curses that have mm -hmm. to do with this story. So. All these, all the Templars were arrested, and the Grand Master of the Temple at the time, his name was Jacques de Molay, mm -hmm. uh, and he spent some time in different prisons around yeah. France. Okay. And he spent one year here in Chinon. Ah, but you mean as a prisoner? As a prisoner. Wow. Okay, so we have to imagine. So, like a tower like this one could be a prison, exactly. for example. Okay, that's pretty cool. Okay, yes. we can imagine that he was a prisoner here. Okay. Exactly. And I mean, these kind of castles, I mean, they were homes, but also because of the strategic position. And it's kind of hard to escape from here because mm -hmm. it's a Obviously, fortress. Yeah. Uh, so they were also used as prisons uh, sometimes. And Jacques de Molay was one of the uh, uh, prisoners. So he spent one year imprisoned here before he was sent to Paris mm. and burnt 
Uh, Another guy that spent time here and finished burnt. Burnt. Like okay, it's kind of a yeah curse being here. Okay, so okay. She, <laughs> she was in a scary place in a way. Oh, okay. So that's for the tempers. Um, we can see also. Sorry, but we can see some wine, and you know how I love wine. Uh, we can see a vineyard here. So Chino is also known for that, right? Exactly. There's a, a type of wine that we call Chino. Uh, an appellation. I don't know how you say in English. An yes. appellation. Yeah, appellation. Yeah, appellation. Um, mm -hmm. So it's the wine from here. It's a very famous type of wine. Around the Loire Valley, there's a lot of uh, vineyards. So it's one of the big regions in France for wine. Okay, so Chino, known for Joan of Arc, for the Templars, for the wine. So there's many reasons to come in Chino. Yes. Uh, the castle itself is very interesting to visit. We we won't see it on the, on the camera, but we just went inside and it's really great. So whenever you have the chance to come in France, of course, you should come here in Chinon. Yeah. Um, so we're going to see also Amboise. That's one of your favorite castles as well. It's amazing. It's amazing. OK, so we're going to go there then. Let's go. OK, thank you guys uh, for this part uh, of Chino and see you in Amboise. Ciao. So today we're going to visit the Chateau d'Amboise, or at least the courtyard. And this is one of the most famous uh, chateaux that we have in the Loire Valley. So what can we know about the Chateau d'Amboise? Well, first of all, uh, that it's a royal okay. chateau. Okay. So a few uh, kings of France actually uh, were raised here um, during the Renaissance. Okay. Uh, most of the chateaux of the Loire Valley the kings lived here during the Renaissance, uh, so that was really the golden age around here. Okay, so here we had kings and queens of France living here. Yes, okay, and so, growing up. And growing up, uh -huh. perfect. And so how big is the Chateau d'Amboise? So one of the biggest, you would think, or Frank, can you tell us, compare to the other ones? Because you probably heard about Chambord or Chenonceau. There is another video about Chenonceau that you need to see. Uh, yes. So this one compared to the others? Well, Chambord is huge. So this one was smaller, but it was pretty big. Actually, we, what we have left today is pretty small compared to what we used to have. It's just that after a while it was abandoned and in the 1800s they destroyed most of it. So it's not that big now, but it was. I mean, the King of France lived here. So, okay, so we're going to see the castle where the King of France used to live. So that's very exciting. Uh, the view from where we are is amazing. So maybe we're going to show you first the view. So this is the Loire River, the famous Loire River. That's why we talk about the Loire Valley. Um, many of the castles around here are um, by the Loire River, uh, which kind of divides France into two. Uh, you have the half north and the half south, since it runs from east to west. very famous couple, so Anne de Bretagne and Charles VIII, so Charles VIII. Exactly. Charles VIII, this guy who was a king of France, were in the very late 1400s. So uh, Anne de Bretagne and Charles VIII, Charles VIII, they lived here. Mm -hmm. And Charles VIII, he died very young in a kind of very, very silly way. Okay. It's one of those famous silly deaths, okay? So <laughs> more. <laughs> what so happened? He was here in the in the castle and he was watching his friends playing this ancient type of tennis. Okay. Uh, so we call jeu de pool, right? Like you play with your hands directly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So he was watching them. They were somewhere below and he got really excited and he wanted to go play with them. Uh, but the door happened to be a little bit low mm -hmm. and he hit his head. Okay, so just like Bim, like yeah, he went like, to the door. Oh my god, I want to go and play tennis with them. Okay, he left, he hit his head, okay, and uh, he got a headache yeah. and uh, he died. 
Okay, so he died of a commotion? We imagine probably. that probably like blood went into his brain and that was it. That was that's it. the end of the silly end of Charlie VIII. And he wasn't even 30 years old. Oh, that's sad. So okay. sad and silly. Okay. So here we are just at the balconies of the Chateau d'Amboise and so what happened here? Okay, I wanted to tell you something that happened here, which is probably the worst thing that ever happened in this chateau. Okay. Uh, the 1500s, the Renaissance time, were not easy time. It was not just all about beautiful paintings and art and everything. In France, we had religion wars mm -hmm. between Catholics and Protestants. This is just after the Reformation. Um, and it wasn't easy for Protestants. Uh, kings of France were always Catholics forever, yeah. and they didn't really want Protestants to be around. This time, we're in the early 1500s, and the king called Francois II, Francis II, was a very young boy. He was 15. He had just become a king. His father died, and um, he decided the Catholic um, radicals would be the ones uh, counseling him. Okay. So because the power was weakened, the king was just a teenager basically. Mm -hmm. By the way, you know who his wife was? Okay, so Francois II. Oh no, tell me. A Scottish queen. Ah, oh Marie, like me. Yes. yes. <laughs> Marie Stuart. Yes. Mary Stuart was here and she was the wife of this. She was a teenager as well. Mm -hmm. So her husband, Fr Francois II, chooses the Catholics to counsel him. Okay. So the Protestants decide, well, we're going to try and kidnap him. He lived here in Amboise. Okay. Um, and try and turn things around um, to try and, you know, uh, get the power. Okay. Uh, so um, it didn't work. Okay. So they tried to kidnap the king, didn't work or... It Kind of no, I mean they, they couldn't actually get him, or what no, happened? No, they couldn't. It was a disaster. Okay, so. they caught him. They caught <laughs> not a good him. idea. Don't not. try to kidnap a king. It's Don't. not going to be good. <laughs> Even if it's just a teenager, he has people around him. Yes. Doesn't work. Obviously. So they got arrested. Um, about twelve hundred people got arrested. Wow. Yes, of the Protestant uh, party, and some of them were actually hanged. Okay. And they say they were hanged from the balconies. Mm -hmm of the castle where we are right yes. right here okay so exactly. and, and so you say that dozen of people were hanged here probably okay this is gross but uh, that's yeah probably renaissance time right so <laughs> yeah to show the example and like don't try and kidnap the king okay so thank you Most of the castles of the Loire Valley used to be medieval fortresses, uh, but after the Hundred Year War, uh, so basically the 1400s, uh, they didn't really need these big fortresses anymore because we didn't have these big wars, uh, so they transformed the castles. You didn't have these big fortress towers, but you had architecture like this, so more ornate, and uh, the very um, typical thing of the architecture of the Loire Valley is the slate. The roofs uh, have slate, so the dark roofs with um, uh, limestone. The, at the village below, you see the, the roofs. Uh, this is very a very typical view. You have the river Loire here and the slate roofs um, by the river. What do we have here? So this is the chapel, the chapel of the, the chateau. Mm -hmm. And there's someone very famous buried in here. A king? Not a king, okay. an artist. Okay. A very famous artist that lived here in Amboise. It's Leonardo da Vinci. Woo! So yes. Leonardo used to live here? Yes, he lived not in the chateau, but here in Amboise. He had his own house that the king of France had given to him, uh, rented to him. Um, we'll do a tour there one day, right? Yeah, that would be great. It's such a beautiful place. Okay. Um, but yes, this is where he's buried. He lived the three last years of his life here in Amboise. He came to France when he was 64. Can you imagine he crossed the Alps on a mule's back? The guy yeah, because, because he was in Italy. He was in okay, Italy. Okay, so, so Davinci was in Italy and at 64 he crossed the Alps, the mountain, he came in France 
to come here in Amboise and that's because the king lived here. The king lives here. Okay, so we're talking about Francis the first. Francis the first. Okay. Yeah, this is the king of France. This is two kings after uh, Charles VIII that we talked about, the one that hit his head I and see. died. Okay. okay, so we're still in the 1600s, early 1600s. Um, Leonardo died here in Amboise in 1519, so in the really early year. And when he died, so we decided to put the remains here in this chapel? Yes, well, it actually it's a little bit more complicated okay. because his, he was first buried in a bigger church that used to stand here back when the castle was much, much bigger than this. And then um, when uh, they destroyed a lot of the castle in the 1800s, they moved his remains here in the chapel. Mm -hmm. So we're almost sure okay it's actually his remains that are here in the chapel of course they took the bones and put them here so maybe in between the transfer we don't know who knows okay. maybe one day they'll check and we'll be sure 100 percent. but we're almost sure it's his remains what we know for sure is that he lived here yeah. and he died here okay. and, and we love to think that this exactly. is his remains okay So now we are in Blois, so after Chinon and Amboise, this is our third castle in the Loire Valley. So we're still with Flora, and so what is so special about this place? Uh, what's special about Blois is that it has very different um, architecture styles. It was mm -hmm. built in different periods of time, um, so it makes it very, very different and very beautiful. Very original, yeah. Yes. Um, this is a bit different because we're in the center of the city. This is a bigger yes. city than Amboise or Chinon, even though it's not super big, but you mm -hmm. know, it's more a downtown okay. uh, type of uh, chateau. Mm -hmm. uh, so the part uh, that's just behind us here, the main entrance, the bricks, um, was built by Louis the Twelfth. Louis the Twelfth. Okay. So remember in Amboise, uh, uh, Charles the Eighth, who hid his head and died very young. Yeah, the husband of Anne de Bretagne. Exactly yes. that one. Uh, so Louis the Twelfth came just after. He was okay. sort of a cousin. A cousin. Okay. So he is the one now being the king. So just because of the accidents of Charles VIII. Exactly. And he decides to move from Amboise and he builds this section of uh, the castle of Blois ah, here. Oh, nice. Okay. So, um, so that's Louis Dous just right there, right? Exactly. That's on the his guy horse. on his horse. Okay. So, and so where's the queen at the time? Well, you know what? It's a little weird, but uh, he gets married to Anne de Bretagne, the what? widow of Charles VIII. Okay, so yes. she just lost her husband. Yeah. And, and she remarried, so was it a choice? Not really. Okay, so what happened? Well, the, the um, Brittany, you know, was always a very important region in France. They were always kind of rebel and everything. And because she got married uh, to the king, then, you know, it was like a special treaty and it, uh, it, uh, Brittany sort of became part of the French kingdom. Uh -huh. uh, so they wanted to make sure it was still like that so they were okay. like uh, so they, they made a kind of a contract yeah with Anne and oh yeah they didn't the ask of her opinion you know I don't think okay she had so she had to remarry she had to be with the successor so shall eight and then now she's married to Louis the 12th okay and they are living here they are moving here or? yes yes they moved here okay so is there anything related so we do this here Anne there's no portrait of Anne on the wall? No portrait of Anne, but you do have up there the letter ah, A for yeah. Anne. You have the L okay. for Louis with the fleur de lis, the lily that's the symbol of the King of France. And um, you have uh, the A for Anne and the symbol uh, for Anne that we could see at uh, Amboise as well, which is, um, how do you call that in, in English? In French, we say Hermine. Yes, I think it will be the same because Hermina, that's the, or Hermine, yeah, that's the same thing. So it's this symbol, it's a black, uh, it's kind of a cross, kind of, mm. uh, but with kind of little flames coming up. But this is, yeah, the Hermine. Maybe we're going to see one in the castle. If we do, we're going to see uh, that on the camera. Will it right? Now? Okay, perfect. So, so now we, yeah? Let's go in. Okay, let's go in. Perfect. Now we are in the courtyard. So what can we see around here? So you can see all the different uh, styles. Yes. 
uh, here we still have the brick building that was built by Louis XII. Uh, so we really the transition between the Middle Ages. You still have a little bit of Gothic, especially on the windows, um, and uh, the Renaissance. We are around uh, 15, the year 1500, um, and you can see this building is very different. It's from the 1600s. It was built by the uncle of Louis XIV, the Sun King. And on this side, you have this beautiful building built by François Ier, Francis I. Um, so in the 1500s, and it's really like the Renaissance with this Italian influence, especially the staircase that you can see there. That's uh, very beautiful and very typical of the. Uh, so we're gonna go there, right? After that, of perfect. And just behind me, also, I noticed uh, some this signs. This is what we were talking about. Yes. So you have the fleur de lis, mm -hmm. the symbol of the kings of France, and just on the side, the ermine. Huh, that what we say so for Anne de Bretagne. Exactly. And so fleur de lis, that was always the symbol of the king. It was a symbol of the king. Uh, it had been for a long time. For a very long time, right? St. Louis was one of the first to have used the fleur de lis. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, discover more about the castle of Blois. You see the light is amazing. We are very lucky. And yeah, let's go in. So this staircase is very typical of the Renaissance and you know, they were very influenced by Italian architecture. Francis I, uh, you can see his uh, So Francis I is, is not the king we just talked about, uh, Louis XII, the, the so it's another king? He's the one that came just after. Ah, okay. He became a king in 1515, mm -hmm. so we're really still in the beginning of the 1500s. Yes. Um, and he's actually the one that brought Leonardo da Vinci to France. Ah, he was so a François big Premier, fan. Yeah, he's very known for that, and to be yeah. a good friend with da Vinci. Exactly, and not just da Vinci, but he really enjoyed Italian culture and art, and you know, the Renaissance really comes from it really means the influence uh, from uh, from Italy in, uh, in okay. architecture. You can see how different this looks from the brick facade we just seen. Yeah, and so this you say it's the symbol of François Ier, so the salamander. The salamander, yes, because you have, for example, the fleur de lis, the lily who had been the symbol of the kings of France, yeah. no matter what king, mm -hmm. right? But at this time, um, kings like to have um, like a little animal that represented them yeah. and uh, the Something most more specific right for yeah, mm -hmm. each of them mm -hmm. the most famous is for sure the salamander mm -hmm. um, who's supposed to be like an animal that spits fire so it can attack can be you know like really well protective mm -hmm. but um, but also can stop uh, the fire, so that's ah, okay. Sort of so it's like it's kind symbol. of a dragon in a way. I mean, yeah. there's some, uh, something kind of yeah, fantastic about yeah, it. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's really cool. Okay. So in many castles around the Loire Valley, you see salamanders. You see that. Okay. So sometimes you see an F for Francis, just like we've seen the L for Louis and the mm. A for Anne. But you can also see the salamander, for example, and then you know, oh, this part has been built by Francis the first. Okay, so and he's known for. What for? So from some wars, right? That happened in Italy. In Italy. Yeah. Okay. And that's okay. He does to so a completely different periods for France. Yes, and then he built a lot. Uh, he built the famous um, Chambord Chateau. Maybe uh, we'll do a tour there. We're going to do a tour in Chambord. That's one of the biggest castles that we have in the Loire Valley. Yeah. So, not for this tour, but for another one, we need to see Chambord. Okay, that's yeah. going to be a great one idea. especially for Chambord. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but he built this part here. He didn't live here that long. His mm -hmm. wife, the Queen Claude, stayed here. Uh, okay. And she had seven children here. And this wow. place became sort of like. Um, a place where children, royal children, were raised. Ah, nice. Actually, uh, I think we mentioned Mary Stuart, the yes. Queen of Scots, mm -hmm. who lived here and she grew up in France and she was brought up here in Blois. Okay, so it's a, so it's kind of a kid castle in a way. That's right. <laughs> Very family element. <laughs> exactly. Okay, nice. Francis I didn't live here much. He sort of decided to go back to Paris because that was still the capital of France. Um, but just like the kings had first come to the Loire Valley because of the Hundred Year War, as we talked about in Chinon, um, they later had to come back because of another war, which is the religion wars that we had in the 1500s. Mm -hmm. So this is just a little bit after Francis I, in the middle of the 1500s. Um, we're just after the Reformation yes. um, and we had 
a very long war, terrible war between Catholics and Protestants. Mm, of course, yeah. It was horrible. And I think the reason why the Reformation was so complicated in France and um, the king just couldn't accept uh, that people would have a different, different beliefs, mm -hmm. a different religion, has to do with the fact that the king of France was supposed to be chosen by God. Mm. You know, there was this very tight link with the church. Um, and so, in a way, everyone had to believe that, of course. Yeah, you need a unity for the for the kingdom, exactly. not, not being divided into different beliefs. Yeah. Yes, and this religious propaganda worked great for hundreds of years. Uh, I think the reason, you know, um, we didn't have many kings in France that were murdered, not like in England where they were killing each other yeah. all the time. <laughs> okay. Well, here, you know, like the king is sacred, he's mm. uh, representing God, so you can't touch him. You can yeah. kill his brother or, you know, but yeah. you don't touch the king. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, there's a different religion. So that was a problem. Okay, so how did they solve the problem? Killing everyone? Is that the solution? That's pretty much what happened. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it went on for decades mm -hmm. and they tried to, you know, by alliances and marriages, trying to go back to peace, mm -hmm. uh, of course, but it never really worked out. And one of these mm -hmm. horrible moments of religion wars happened here in the oh. castle of Blois, when one of these um, Catholic leaders uh, called the Duc de Guise was murdered. Oh. Uh, the king, so at the time we're talking about Henry III. Um, Henry III is the son of Catherine of Medici. Yes. yes, Catherine of Medici, you probably heard about her like, in many of the tours that we're making every week. Uh, she's quite a character. She's very important into French history. And so, so she was here too? She was here. Okay. She was here. Um, so uh, one of her sons, um, Henry III, uh, at this point decided to uh, murder uh, the Duc de Guise ah. here in Blois. Now we are climbing the spiral staircase. Yes, the famous spiral staircase by François Ier, uh, which technically the spiral staircase is still a medieval type of uh, staircase, but you have all the decoration that's very typical from the Renaissance. So yeah. we're really at the transition. It's beautiful. And that leads us to the royal rooms. Let's go. This is the king's uh, chamber, and this is where the Duke of Guise was murdered. This is the queen's bedroom, and this is where Catherine of Medici died. Oh, so just right here in this bed. We're in one of the oldest parts of the Chateau de Blois, the medieval part, and um, this it was used for um, shooting very many different films, including uh, Jeanne d'Arc, Joan of Arc, by Luc Besson. Thank you guys for watching this video. So that's the end of our tour. Uh, thank you so much, Flora, for thank explaining you. everything about the Loire Valley. Um, so if you like this video, please share, uh, follow us also. Every week we're making this type of video. Also, if you're supporting us with a little tip for your guide, you will receive a little bonus. Uh, you will see us in a wine cellar. That's pretty cool to see, yeah. I'm telling you. Um, so yeah, so please continue to support us. That's, uh, that's been the word to us. And that's, uh, of course, great to continue our work during this all year where we are waiting for you guys, waiting for you to come here in the Loire Valley to join us on this amazing tours. So thank you so much. Thank you, Flora. And thank you. Ciao. Bye, guys.